The following is a transcript between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am, originally produced on April 9, 2021, under the constellation of Aries and the mental week, examining through the ankles chakra. Me, where? It is the last question. The path, the feet, walking. Where am I going? And yesterday, I think it was answered in terms of when. You said that time is nothing more than a calculation of the process of matter. That is, a conceptual constant of what happens to reality. Time is thus the subjective aspect of the universe. And space is the objective aspect. Put this away, and having talked about holographic reality, my question is, what is really space? What is where? Are we really going somewhere? And from there, the basic question of philosophy, where do we come from, where are we, and where are we going? I am. Was it space? The word comes from the word sphei, which gave origin to spatium in Latin, which at first referred to throwing, dragging something. Something spacious then refers to the act of moving something away from one point to another. To space is to throw, to separate things, and thus space became the concept of the distance between that which is thrown or dragged far away and its point of origin. Space then, like time, are unreal constants, ideological concepts. Me, wow, you're going to make my head hurt again with your answer, aren't you? I am. Take a deep breath. But if you want to understand reality, you must first destroy what you believe about it. Time and space, already spoken in many times, are conceptual constants of the synaptic network of the universe. That is, that existence encounters the cosmos, the order, as it expands by these two constants, weaving the webs of its mind its self-consciousness. Space, from Indo-European throw, being the distance over which objects are pulled, and time, from Indo-European extension, being the measure or fraction of the process that these objects go through in their transformation. The extension by which an object is thrown and the object is constituted by patterns of matter. The word pattern comes from the Indo-European pater, meaning father. That is to say, the one to follow and the one to establish the law, the path, the conduct. And matter comes from the Indo-European mater, meaning mother, which leads us to the understanding of the manifestation, the creation of body, a life, who gestates a new being. These ideas that humans have of reality are linked to the family, to mom and dad, to the distance traveled in migrations, leaving one home to go to another, seeing how things and oneself are transformed in this journey. That is why you have created the image of a heavenly father, a divine mother, and a paradise to go to, a hell to escape from, and mortal regulations proper to the dwellers of the territory in order to lead the people under a conduct. Me. So even our way of understanding what surrounds us and even the intangible and subtle, the spiritual, is also based on human reality? I am. To understand the universal laws, you must free yourself from the limiting ideas of the human location. The human being places himself in an anthropocentric position, which makes him self-refer to the universe in his own image and likeness. Now, the development of human consciousness is a path to know the cosmic truths, and therefore, 
it is first necessary to know very well the nature of a human thought before being able to transcend it. Humans who seek to find a destiny of enlightenment, to reach a new state of consciousness, forget something very important, and that is that without taking notice of their historical baggage, they decide to climb to the top of Everest in shorts but carrying a one-ton container on their backs. And in their pride, they refuse to look at what's inside the container, believing that if they make it to the top, they will get rid of everything and be free. When the two possible truths are, you will never get there or... In case you get there, you will have brought everything with you, and you will not be free. Me. How should I look at reality, then? I am. As we have said many times, it is an interaction of thought waves that generate the perceptions of energy that makes up matter. In the microcosm, as we have said, a wave can behave as a particle, allowing it to be in several places at once. The best way to understand this is to observe a sunset looking at the sea. In the sea, the waves, the ripples are thousands and they are transforming at every instant. The water reflects the photonic particles making the mirrors that pass these photons as if they were tennis balls in the middle of a competition. This makes you see a constant glow on the waves, which is like seeing hundreds of suns at the same time, many reflected in each wave that appears and disappears, given the sensation of gold shining in all directions. Those thousands of suns reflected in the waves of the sea do not exist, because there is only one sun in the sky which you are not seeing, because it is behind you, and you can only see the thousands of options of this sun. And although none of them are real, they all illuminate you. They may even blind your vision on the outside, as if they were really there. Me. Sure, they reflect me, because they are a reflection. A single sun reflected in each wave of the sea of the oceans, multiplied by millions, shining in all directions, making each living being receive that light or mirage in a different way, in a different angles, intensities, and shapes. I am. So then you understand that the universe is like the ocean full of waves, and there is only one particle that is reflected in each wave at the same time. The waves, the ripples, move, transforming the options of the particle. And the same particle, like the sun, never moved. It was always there, fixed. Me. This means that in reality, all of the destinations, paths, places that we believe exist are only mirages of something that was always in the same place. I am. And not only that... But every mirage, because it is a projection, never really moved, but simply fluctuates its reflection according to the vibration of the waves. That is to say that, depending on the state of vibration, the particle will look like one way or the other, just as the brightness of the sun can look flat or stretched or round or of different colors. But it's always been, and will always be, the sun. Me. That is what we call oneness. We are all one. We are all those reflections of the sun in the waves of the sea of the constant of time and space. I am. For this very reason, referring to the microcosmic vision, the particle lives all of the probabilities of itself, manifesting the options that are capable of being observed by consciousness. In different times and spaces, this particle will be launched and expanded, creating the appearance of energy, 
which creates the idea of magnetism forming atoms, which gives origin to molecules and thus to compounds and chemical elements, which react creating proteins. Deoxyribonucleic acids, sugars, plasma, cells, tissues, organs, networks, and organic and inorganic beings. Mineral, plant, fungus, animal, and human kingdoms. And in evolution, the interaction of these energy data generate synapses, which make intelligent interpretations capable of asking the questions and connecting to the infinite universal mind, me. And all that microcosm that has been nothing but the reflection of a true self. So, the constant answer to the question where will always be here. I am. Here is the only real answer in the universe, but only when referring to the microcosm. Once the brightness is cast upon the waves, there are many positions and all are relevant. For, as I told you, even if you do not look at the sun, its reflection will also be felt in your eyes and face. So, every path, every step, every place I go, every destination and purpose are just as relevant as here. Knowing that in reality none of this exists does not distract from the importance of existence. For remember that to exist means to be outside, ex stare, and for something to come out, it means that it was inside before. What you interpret as real on the inside has been expressed and projected on the outside, making that hologram to the mind as real as that which lies within. Externals are projected reference points of the internal world, living the outside, walking the path, it's a way of being able to walk the paths of the cosmic synapsis that you would otherwise never have been able to experience. Me, where do we come from? I am. We come from ourselves, from the unity, from the only particle that exists, and that is there, in the center of all things, the divine source, the one that is the zero and the one at the same time and that decided to take the step to live both options, calling them micro and macro cosmos. Me, where are we? I am here. We are always here. No matter where you go and what your destination is, you will always be in the right place, for it is impossible for you to be outside of you and everything around you will always be according to your state. Me, where are we going? I am to ourselves and the only possible destination. Some call it going home, but that is very human. No matter where you go and the environment you find yourself in, you will always know one thing for certain. You will be there. You are the only possible where and the only real destination. Me. Why must we move forward then? Why do we constantly ask ourselves the question of where we must go and where am I going? I am. Close your eyes and think within. For you to have found the question, thousands of neurons in your being had to exchange data, to move, to vibrate, to pulse electrons that transmit the energy in the form of information. The neurons in this pulsing trace pathways, weaves networks. Thus, when we ask ourselves the question again, you will not need to think so much or even twice. The neurons will simply find the path previously traced and they will know what to think, what to do or say. 
If the neurons do not move, there is no data. There are no senses. There is nothing. Remember, you are a neuron of the earth. And if you don't move, if you don't travel, if you don't walk, if you don't interact with others, learning at every step, what do you expect then from the world? Do you really believe the planetary change is possible with people who don't ask, where am I going? Who remain still without doing anything? Me. We need to connect, to do things, to move. So the purpose of asking where to travel, to find more destinations, to move forward, goes beyond migrations, but has purpose of inter interconnection of improving the way of interpreting data. I am. When you move around the world, you connect networks of information that cross time and space. Every step you take, every place you meet, every person you interact with nourishes the world with new data that makes you more aware, that makes you evolve intelligently. Me. Asking yourself where to and moving toward that place, well, it's key to evolution. I am, and in the same way, you will understand that not knowing where to go is a sign of the need to go out, to seek, not to wait. The universe is not looking for you to get anywhere because nowhere really exists, and the only real thing is the mind that interprets the realities the networks that connect everything between the micro and macro cosmos, where that is the key to the synapsis, to the fabric of the mind. The body moving through the world are the existences of the inner spirit seeking to live, to experience what lies within. Me. It's as if we want to go through the neutral lattices, it is impossible to go through our brain, but we can interpret the world as that brain. And as we walk it, as we move along its paths, we will visit those thoughts. Existence is like a great imaginary play that the mind designated to be able to walk through itself. I am. Do you understand now what space is? Do you know where to go? Me. Yes, I know why I am in Giza for a year, and now I understand, because I had to remember that I am here, and only by seeing this truth, I could connect everything else and walk with the world with this consciousness. This was what I needed to know in order to put my feet firmly on the ground. This is the fundamental key to understanding the foundation of the whole I Am project connecting the power centers of the earth, the grid. All the dots are here, and by walking them, I am just making synapses. I am joining, connecting the parts again. What do you call this in Latin? Me, remembering, recordus, recordare connecting the parts, joining the limbs again. I am, remember, me, remember, I am, remember.